originally come from uh, Katori in Japan, where the martial art country originally. So I was uh, always interested in martial art. And being a small boy, I want to be strong. Uh, very simple that. Uh, well, to start with, I wanted to do a martial art of some sort for self-defense purposes. Um, so I had a look around at various arts um, and various dojos, but uh, what struck me particularly with Aikido is that um, I wanted to do an art that I could train all my life right up to an old man, not something that I'd be nice and strong if till about 50 and then my body would start to break down. So I could see that um, when I saw my first Aikido class, I could see that it was effective, but I could also see that it wasn't very devastating on the person's body when they were executing a technique. So. To me, it looked like something that could be done for many years, and I later found out that that was the case. Uh, this is one of the mission of my teacher, Saito Sensei, carried his lifetime uh, to preserve uh, certain the uh, training syllabus led uh, by O Sensei in Iwama Dojo. So uh, we respect what the O Sensei achieved, and we believe it's completed. Before we learn technique, we make uh, our body ready to be martial artist. Those training come from uh, Suwaribaza. Uh, Suwaribaza Ikkyo to Gokyo is very, very important uh, basic training. By doing so, uh, your, the bone structure, particularly bone density, and also your ligament, uh, everything improve, develop. Receiving my favorite technique is Nikkyo, uh, mainly because of the body development. Um, at first, when you first see a Nikkyo technique, which is like the, the pin on the wrist and the sankyo, um, it looks quite painful at first, um, but after a few months of training and after a year of training, it becomes like a massage. It's a stimulation technique, and it actually makes your body much, much stronger. You, if you miss a few classes, your body starts to crave that stuff, and you want to get back into class straight away. It's like you haven't had your coffee in the morning. A nice strong Nikkyo wakes you up, wakes your body up and makes you feel a lot more you know, alive. Then gradually we have a Kihon uh, throwing technique. So this is how we were taught to develop. So that we will keep strict training syllabus which pass by O Sensei. There's one uh, specific training in Aikido that I really like most. Uh, it's the first training that we do in every class. It's called uh, Taino Henko. Uh, mainly because uh, you have to do it precisely, as Austin has been telling us, that footwork has to be precisely in place so you can do it uh, properly. And also, um, there is a real-life application to that. Uh, Taino Henko, you engage, but you try to avoid it. Uh, you compromise, find a common uh, endpoint, something like that. Taino Henko is a very important part. In whatever level it is, you become a fifth black belt, or sixth black belt, or my level, or seventh black belt, still we're doing that. Uh, such an important essence in it. So initially by doing uh, uh, Taino Henko, Kokyu, Morotedori Kokyu, and the Shihonange, we are not learning a technique itself, but we are learning essence of Aikido. <laughs> Weapon practice, we have a two, two area of weapon practice. One is uh, the sword, and the other one is the jaw. Uh, two issues coming from that. Particularly, a sword is very important. Um, how we balance our body, and also how we produce extension power, which is, as I said, breast power, it purely comes from sword. It's got a very heavy eff emphasis on weapons. And the movements in the weapons, you start to realise, are all relatable to when you do the free hand. So it's very important. They're, they're basically one and the same when you start 
I, I think personally understanding them. Joe is the uh, uh, coming from spear work. From here, they will learn application of force from center of gravity to the end of the spear, which is your weapon, end of the weapon. That's why the jaw training is also important to, to learn how to extend your power from center of gravity to the end of the weapon. In the real life, uh, the fight is uh, one to others, one to two, one to three, one to five, but you have to win. That's what the what situation is. So the, particularly our Aikido based on the sword work, important to be able to deal with one to other, which is several people, several opponents or several enemies. Uh, yeah, it's taken me a long time to figure this one out, but um, after a while, um, the techniques execute are much better um, when you're a bit more receptive to the person you're doing the technique to. So looking the same way that the person is looking, looking from their perspective. You start to look at the situation from the other person's point of view. You can, what they call an Aikido, blend with that person and try and guide the argument into a resolution of some sort. Of course, uh, uh, the overall concept is Aiki. It originally started with this Awase. Awase itself is Aiki. And, um, uh, our say is uh, uh, the, uh, synchronization, breath and mind. And uh, Aiki governs more bigger picture. Aiki is uh, uh, you synchronize everything around you, which Grandmaster said that you synchronize your bigger uni universe. That's what the uh, concept of Aiki. At the end of the day, Buddhism, uh, martial artists, whatever it is, this nation is the uh, uh, human philosophy. So the uh, uh, top the end is a similar result. Doesn't matter Christianity, whatever it is. Yes, I believe that way.